What's up everyone? It's Ellen Divine, Ellen Divine Hair on Instagram. And we're gonna do a little bit of hair cutting today. So there's a lot of different bobs going around. We're noticing a trend in people cutting their hair off short. And so particularly, I'm loving the Italian bob. Now the Italian style bob is still gonna be a really short bob above the shoulders. The difference is gonna be a few key things. You're gonna have more volume and body in the style, and it's also gonna have a deep side part. So we're still gonna do a one length bob, but how do we get our one length bob to have enough airiness and movement so that it can get blown out, be full, but also have this weight and almost a square finish to it. So let's get right into it. Knowing that we're gonna have a one length bob with just a little bit of texture put into it, I'm gonna show you the sectioning that made most sense for me when I was learning my bobs. The main thing we wanna do is we wanna cut with the shape of the head. So here's how I section my mannequin. You're gonna notice, first, I do have a little triangle left out right at the center front. We're gonna put a little bit of a fringe on it. All I did was go to that orbital bone or the corner of the eye, and I took a vertical line right up where that head starts to slope. I put everything else into its four quadrants. As I turn the mannequin, you'll notice I have vertical lines running down the head. One's gonna happen right where that head starts to change direction. So I'm gonna show you the full thing. Here's my center part right at the back, taking that from center front to center back. And then we just found the corners of the head. An easy way to do that is to put your hand flat on the back of the head and your hand flat on the side. Your two hands will come to a point and that's where you take your section. So for example, I'll take my hand, lay it flat on the side of the head. At this point, I would have no clips in it because it's not sectioned out, maybe just one in front. I'll take my second hand, lay it right flat at center back. Right here, my fingernails start to touch and I can just rock my fingers in and that gives me a reference point of where to draw my vertical line. And typically on everyone's head shape, you'll have a little piece right behind the ear. So it's just gonna go right behind the ear and it'll be a little sliver. When you start cutting to the head, things are gonna be a lot easier to dissect, figure out what's going on on your end, but it's also gonna give a really detailed cut on your guest that's sitting in the chair. This is my center part. I'm working within this one bevel on the head right here on the left side. And I've clipped all the other hair out of the way. So we're starting right in our back. This is our first section we're gonna take. I took a horizontal subsection. So my finger position is gonna stay horizontal. My finger position represents the line I'm gonna cut. Because I want a one length bob, I'm gonna cut a horizontal line and then I'll show my spin in the front of how I like to do it. When I cut, just because I want a little bit of texture on the ends, I'm gonna slightly graduate it. So this would be flush against the head. I'll show you from a profile view. I'm gonna slightly lift it. To cut in its natural fall, I could place the comb against the head shape, but what I'm gonna do is just slightly elevate it out at the bottom here, and it's just gonna give me a little bit of a layer on the bottom. Following up the head, I'm doing the exact same thing, taking a horizontal section. With your section size, you don't want it to be too thick. You want it to be fine enough that you can see your previous section that you just cut underneath. But you can take a little bit larger of a section when you want texture in a haircut. Now why we do larger sections as we cut, if you think of a paper cutter, right? Remember those big paper cutters from school? They kind of look like this. <laughs> um, if you think about using that or even cutting a piece of paper with a pair of scissors. So if you take that piece of paper and you put it in a paper cutter, one single one, cut it, you get a nice crisp line. But now imagine if you took a stack of like 10 or 20 papers, 
did it in the paper cutter or cut it with a scissor, you'll notice they almost like fan out, right? So the reason we're doing the fan out, we're taking larger sections. If I wanted to really get a lot of texture, I would take the rest of this hair, pull it out and cut, and it would just give me a little bit more texture. Now I wanna see a little bit of bluntness to it. So I want it to just be a good amount. So as I'm cutting, I want you to look at how I'm graduating this just slightly out. It's just lifting off of that natural fall position. So I'm not gonna put a degree on it, but I am slightly graduating it. So I am gonna get that little bit of flick on the bottom. And if you've seen pictures of these Italian style bobs, that's almost my favorite part is the bottom's very carefree and kind of flippy. And it's a little bit more relaxed than what we've seen with like a French bob where it can be textured, but it's very strong, very short. This is gonna be a little longer. And then I'm gonna have this soft graduation so that I have the opportunity for it to just kind of kick out and flip and get body. And we'll do a little bit of layering on the top as well. Something else to note as we're getting into the haircut, notice as I'm cutting this section, my finger position, which is how I'm holding the hair, is parallel to the section I'm cutting. So my finger is going to mimic and live within that section. This is the key to this sectioning. The reason we wanna do this is because if I have a whole side, say my left side or right side ends up a little bit longer on one side, I can then go back to my sectioning and identify where exactly it feels a little bit longer or shorter. So our back section is done. I'm gonna do the exact same thing on this next section. Starting with that horizontal subsection, I'm going to drop down my first section. I'm going to comb out of the way and clip up. Now my tool of choice as I'm cutting is going to be a shorter shear. This is to protect my fingers, <laughs> but when I'm doing a lot of point cutting, which is what we're doing here, I prefer, this is just my style, to use a shorter blade. So I'm working with our Streamline series. These are the five 0.5, I love them for this kind of detail-oriented hair cutting. And I love using it anytime I'm doing really tight spots on the head. So if you catch me doing a pixie, I'm almost always using a shorter shear when I'm below that occipital bone. That's just my style, my comfort. And then we're gonna go ahead and use that white comb. This is our cutting comb against dark hair. I'm gonna pull the rest of the hair out of the way. And see, I'm leaving just a little touch right here of my previous section as my guide. Gonna comb all the hair down in its natural fall. Now watch my finger position. Instead of going square to the head, this is center back, this would be square to it. I'm gonna be parallel to my section. We're gonna comb. You can do one comb from underneath to get to that graduation. Your body position at the salon when you're cutting this should be directly in front of the section you're cutting. Or just take a step to the side and once you lock your fingers in, you can open your body up. Okay, next section. So I'm gonna go up the head doing the exact same thing, following the exact same line. Okay, so we just finished our back two sections and you can see the structure that's starting to come into the haircut. So see the subtle little graduation we got? I love it, okay? Let's jump right behind the ear. This is where things start to shift a little bit and that is because we have this hairline. Now, when you take your sections, if I took a section right here, I have a lot of opportunity if I give too much tension, whatever it may be, maybe I make an accident. If I take that first section, it has the opportunity to jump up a little bit and create a little bit of a hole. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I have cut holes in my haircuts many times, especially when I was first learning how to cut hair, and it's not fun. So, I'm gonna jump to the next section. Now, when I come here, notice where I took my first subsection. It's gonna be right above the ear. So I'm getting all of this in one section to kind of save myself from any kind of accidental hole that could happen. Same thing is gonna happen on this side. I'm using the Sambia dry cutting clips. You can use them wet, they work great as well. 
and you won't have any creases or dents in the hair. So I do love that, because as I cut, this hair is starting to dry a little bit, so I'm getting a damp texture rather than sopping wet, which I like for texturizing. First section goes right above the ear. I'm gonna comb everything in its natural fall. If I was flat against the head, I'd do right there, but I'm gonna lift it out a little bit. Elevate out. I'm gonna take a comb from underneath to bring me to that point. Slightly out of its natural fall, here's my guide. Now I have a pretty large section this time, so I might need to take two. I'm point cutting this, and I'm doing really shallow point cuts because that's gonna give me a nice blunt line, but a little bit of texture. Okay, I am repositioning now. And another thing to know, as I'm point cutting, see my little ring finger right here? That's where I like to park my still blade as I point cut. So I like doing that so it has stability so I'm not going in and chopping at it. When I do this, I can guarantee I'm gonna cut myself. I mean, it happens. It could still happen anyway, but if I have a little stability on my finger, I find it much, much easier to scan across that hair and get the texture I want without sacrificing a slice on my finger. Just moving that thumb and scanning across. Lift it so y'all can see, just like that. So that is right behind the ear. Now, because we're lifting, we're lifting and picking up out of its natural fall, you're gonna start notice you get all these little long pieces. It's okay, just leave them till the end. Okay, so we're gonna get some of those. I don't want you to worry about it too much yet because that is when you can choose to tilt their head down at the end of the cut and just clean up any of the junk that's going on. So we're gonna keep with the theme here. Just like we did in the back, I'm taking a horizontal subsection, clipping the rest out of the way. Okay, I'm gonna comb down and I'm just going to elevate out, slightly out of its natural fall. I'm gonna park that still blade on my ring finger and I'm gonna go for it here. Okay, reposition, just like so. I'm keeping my finger position, how I'm holding the hair, parallel within my section. Now on the opposite side, it's gonna be repeating the steps to a T. So the exact thing. Get all the hair that you're not working with out of the way. It's gonna comb to get all the grains of the hair smooth. And I am slightly elevating and we're just gonna cut the rest of this off. So cute, because we're starting to get all these little kind of flippies, the natural textures coming out. And that's gonna be key also. Now we're on the opposite side. Once again, I'm taking that section right above the ear, so we're avoiding any kind of holes, and we're gonna do the exact same thing. All right, so we finished the entire back. You'll see we're starting to get that kind of natural wave, a little bit subtle graduation. So let's jump to the side parts now. Now, in the front, I'm gonna choose to give just a little bit of an angle. This is something that I talk a lot of my guests into, especially if they're going from long hair to short hair. A lot of times a super sharp horizontal bob, like from straight on, can be a little overwhelming and intimidating for guests. So what I like to do is just leave a little subtle angle. Instead of doing a horizontal line on their face shape, which is not bad, but can actually widen the face shape. It can make it look wider. Horizontal lines draw the, your eye from left to right, so things look wider, right? Um, diagonal lines do a little bit of softening effect. So I like to take my next section, as I drop it, I'll show you, and shift it slightly out of natural fall. Um, not only elevating it, but I'm gonna tilt it back a bit. So that's gonna give me like an insurance policy on the front. Um, and I just like doing that sometimes depending on the comfort level of guests, like they wanna cut their hair off, they wanna go this short, but they're a little nervous. I typically will say, let's leave it an inch longer, see how you feel. Um, and if you're ready to cut that extra inch off by the end of it, then great, let's do it. No harm, no foul if you're gonna leave it a little bit of length. Not everyone is like this. This is just a tip for someone, if you have the vibe, like you know they want it, but 
you kind of know them, you know what I mean? Um, and I find, I would say probably 85% of the people I do this on end up keeping that little extra inch or sometimes it's just a half inch um, because it just gives this little bit of softening around their face. So that's what I'm gonna do here. We're gonna do the exact same thing though. I'm still gonna keep my finger position horizontal because I'm now gonna use over direction to give me my angle. Okay, so we're gonna start in our front section. We have our horizontal subsection. I'm gonna comb this in its natural fall while slightly elevating it out to my guide, okay? Now the motion that we're gonna change is I'm just gonna twist it back so you can see this front hair has moved out of natural ball. And now all I have to do is cut a horizontal line right here. I'm gonna lock and load this right now and then spin to the side so you can see how we're just meeting up. So this is gonna give me some graduation, but check out how it just gives me a super subtle diagonal angle right there. That's all I'm looking for with this cut. Because when you look at this cut, it's one length, so it's blunt and straight all the way around. Like I said, this is just my spin on it, and this is just how I like to do my bobs on my guests. So that is something too. I mean, keep in mind, we're hairdressers, and people come to us and come to you because of the things that's your signature, how you do things. There's a million hairdressers that cut a bob, but what are the little things that you do that make your bob special or make it suit them the best it can? So we're gonna comb, I'm slightly elevating, and now we're just gonna twist back. That's the best way to explain it. I'm gonna twist till it goes horizontal for me. Okay, so twisting my wrist is the motion twist back, point cut. So you can see you still have a strong line, but a little bit more length in the front and you're getting all this little graduation on the back. I love it. Jump to the opposite side here and we're doing the exact same thing on this side as the opposite. So we've got all the back and sides finished. Now we want to jump in. I just want to add a little bit of fringe because when the blowout kind of happens, I want a couple little pieces to kind of frame the face, lay down. So I'm going to cut a longer sort of curtain fringe. So let's go right to center front and we're just going to get a little slice right in the center to be our guide. I'm going to hold my fingers right above the tip of the nose and then cut below it. Starting with the left side, I'm gonna pick up the hair, I have my finger placement vertical, and then here is my guide right behind it. So that's going to be my reference point, my guide. So because I'm over directing, I'm gonna get more length on the outside here. So I'll drop it right before we texturize, but because I've elevated it, and over directed it, I get this nice long kind of swoopy curtain fringe. Same thing on the opposite side and then we'll take some bulk out. I'm gonna grab my 14 tooth point cutting shears. I love these. It's gonna mimic point cutting without having to do all the extra steps. Just to get a little bit of lightness in there, I'm gonna take my sections and I'll still over direct and elevate them to where I was earlier, but now I'll take my 14 tooth and just do a snip at a time. All these do is go in and create a little bit of negative space. So you can see those short pieces that just happened and I can slide out and do one more. And it's just gonna help kind of bevel, give that airiness and texture. So you can visually see the difference of how this lays versus this. Okay, we'll drop the rest. And you can see the shape that we're starting to get. Super cute, have that length in front. It's gonna do a tiny bit of layering just to give texture. And I'm still gonna use my 14 tooth point cutting shears. Okay, because I just wanna get a little bit of lift, I don't even wanna call it layering per se as giving a little bit of texture. So I'm just gonna go back to my quadrants, super easy. And in this front quadrant, instead of taking it all at once, I'll just split it in half vertically, and then I'm just gonna lift all the hair straight up, and as it falls, I'm gonna come underneath 
and just start doing a little bit of an invisible layer with my point cutting shears. So I'm getting a good amount of hair off, but it's also giving me kind of like a ghosty layer that's happening. Don't wanna do too much because a big part of this cut is the weightiness to the bottom. So I just wanna do enough to kind of lift it. And I'm picturing the front kind of billowy and very soft. So I just wanna get some of this weight off. My blade is pointed towards the ceiling and I just sort of skim right along the edge of the hair and peel away as it falls. So it's just taking a little hair out at a time and I'll just continue this wherever I see fit for bulk and weight. All right, so we're gonna get into the styling portion. First thing I did was swap this hair over for a deep, deep side part. And we're just gonna start with a little bit of hand drying. So I'm gonna go in with the Pro Light Blow Dryer. This is the Sea Smoke Edition. I love this blow dryer. It's lightweight, it's not gonna strain my elbow, or also known as my shoulder, um, both. It's very lightweight. So I'm gonna use my no nozzle to concentrate the air. And I'm just gonna go straight up with it because we want to get a lot of volume. So I'm going to get this, I'd say about 90% dry. I put a little bit of mousse and root lifter in there and I'm going to take all those roots up and then we'll take a little bit of a round brush to it. We have the shape in how we want. I got some body in there. And now I'm just gonna take my two and one Marcel and just do really large sections, curl just to get some body in there. Working across the top here, I'm just going in doing horizontal sections again, making sure as I put that curling iron in, I'm landing on base, meaning I'll get the most volume at the top. Don't want a major curl, we just want a little bit of bounce. So when you curl horizontally versus vertically, it's gonna bounce up a lot more, and you're gonna get more curl on the end, versus when you go vertical, you get more curl in the middle. All right, so we've put some curl into it, we've swept it to the side. Now we're just gonna brush out curls a little bit using the Artist Series brush. I'm gonna spray this with a little bit of hairspray. And now we're just going to kind of start molding the hair into place. Okay, so this is why I added the fringe. I just like a little bit of body and swoop to it, but completely optional. And this is just gonna kind of soften any of the frizz, comb out some of the two curly pieces, and really just polish it. Taking our brush, and I'm just placing the hair where I want it. I want it off the face, so I'm just gonna kind of drag it. And that is my take on an Italian Bob. There's so many different ways to do this. This is just a way that works for me. Hopefully you can take some of these techniques and put them to use behind the chair and really put your own spin and style on it. Remember, all the little things that you do behind the chair are what make you special. It's why your guests come to you and why they appreciate you. Follow me on Instagram, Ellen Divine Hair. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to Sam Via's YouTube so we can stay up to date with all the education that comes out.